The guys will race me harder because they still don't want to get beat by the girl. I feel like I've had to work harder to earn the team's respect. Having someone like a coach see that firsthand and realize, oh wow, I never went through that, but she's going through that, it builds a kind of respect towards me because they see I'm dealing with so much more. So it's been challenging, but it's also been very rewarding to build those relationships with guys who have my back. I think for any woman who wants to get into a male-dominated industry, whether it's racing or something else, I would really advocate for trying to find male allies, the guys in your professional space who you feel can be empathetic to what you're going through and who you feel can listen and understand to some of the obstacles that women face that men maybe don't face, so that if your voice isn't loud enough for whatever reason, which I agree is unfair but sometimes happens, these male allies can be the advocates. Racing is a tough sport to really understand if you didn't grow up in it because it's a totally different experience when you're at the track that doesn't always translate on TV. People can feel the electricity at the track and they can feel the vibrations and they can hear the sounds of the engine and the smells of all the parts that are going into it. And it's so cool to see the young kids that are coming out to the track and seeing their heroes and being able to feel the energy of a racetrack. It is really exciting, really intense and really dramatic. There were two moments that I was most proud of in my career. One was when I was 14 years old and I won the Skip Barber Racing Series Championship. And I was the first female to do it. I saw myself as a champion. Other people saw me as a champion. And for me, that kind of set the platform. The other moment that I'm really proud of was in 2015, the first year that I didn't have to balance racing and schoolwork. And so I really had to prove that I deserved to be there. And I won my first race, went on to win half the races that season and win the championship. And for me, it just really solidified that I had every right to pursue this as a career. The excitement of when you master a corner and you master a lap and you win a race far outweighs the fear. And so when you're totally in the zone, it's kind of like the car is an extension of you and it's exhilarating and it's exciting and it's hot and it's loud and it's so intoxicatingly addictive, it's wonderful. Various journalists have reported that to race in the top level of NASCAR and the Cup Series costs between 20 and 25 million dollars a season. So it trickles down from there, but it's still millions of dollars to go racing because of the cost of tires and fuel and personnel and getting to the track and backup cars. It's a very competitive sport. Everyone wants to have that edge that lets you go faster. And so when we're talking about numbers that big, one has to be very creative in how they find that. We're not seeing as many companies come in and sponsor one full season. You're seeing a bunch of them come together and make it happen. So that's been the most challenging and I've had to be the most creative and strategic in terms of how do I build up my brand away from the racetrack to provide value to various companies that may not be involved in racing now. If you're trying to sell yourself, the most important thing you can do is to very quickly show how everything you have going for you is valuable to them. Be very concise in how you're going to help them. You have to be a little shameless and and uh, ruthless. If you don't believe in yourself, it's gonna be hard for other people to believe in you. So make sure that you believe in yourself first and foremost.